But what I want to talk about is networking. And I want to establish what it is and how networking can help you get a job. So the mistake I think that people make with networking is they see it's something that they do rather than something that they live. So the best networkers are those who are really helpful, they're friendly, and they realise that when you earn the right, you can tap into someone else's network. So I believe that networking is based on three universal laws. I didn't invent them, they've been around since time began, and they're all on page one. The first one is that you give without expectation. Do something for someone not to get something back. Do something for someone because you want to help them achieve their goal. But we all know people who give with a hook, who actually give information or give help, but they give it with, I've done this for you, you owe me one. And those people aren't good networkers because they don't understand that that's not the way to do it. So giving without expectation is one. The second key is that great networkers have an abundance mentality. Now, I know that I'm speaking to an un unemployed group and you go, well, unemployment's high in, in Sydney and in New South Wales and, and Australia in general, and there's not opportunity. So we're going to talk later about the hidden market, the hidden job market that's not necessarily on SEEK, that's not necessarily in the paper. It's that hidden job market where someone says, oh, Fred, we need a few more people down at such and such where I'm working. Do you want a couple of shifts? I know you've had experience in that area. And they go, yeah, sure. So that's the hidden market. It's not advertised, but there's a lot of it. Okay, a lot of it goes on. And they say that something like, like only 20% of ads are actually advertised. So you want to tap into that hidden market, don't you? Yeah? So we're going to talk about abundance. You may not be working now, but there are jobs out there. We've just got to find that the right one for you. The third one is the law of reciprocity. And what that means is that what you give out comes back tenfold. So if you give out referrals, you get back referrals. Give out information, you get back information. Give out nothing, you get back nothing. So if you find that people in your life aren't being all that helpful, how helpful are you being to, to others? Whatever, whatever's happening in your life is a reflection of what you're actually, the energy that you're giving out. So that's the three universal laws. But the fourth thing that sets a poor networker from a good networker is their ability to make what I call a heart-to-heart -heart connection. And the heart-to-heart -heart connection is when you listen with your ears as well as your heart. You're not looking over your shoulder for someone better to talk to. You actually engage with the person who's in front of you. That's very important. Okay, so recipro reciprocity, abundance, giving without expectation, and making the heart-to-heart -heart connection. That's the four parts of networking. So I want to give you a few tools to make it really easy for someone to pass your information on. Okay, now, if I ask a show of hands, how many of you in the room have got a business card? Okay, resounding, very good, a couple, very good. For those that know, it doesn't, you don't have to have a business, you don't have to have a job to have a business card. Now, you can go to Vistaprint, V-I-S-T-A-P-R-I-N-T, vistaprint.com, and you can get free business cards, single-sided free business cards, and, and you pay $10 postage. Because what, what there is in, in networking is what's called the trilogy of trust. So Angela trusted me, you trust Angela and afford employment. So based on that, you're here today to see myself, Louise and George and hear a little bit about afford. So that's what's called the trilogy of trust. Now that's how jobs, that's how you get a job. Someone trusts you and says, oh, Bill's a great guy. Oh, okay, well, we're looking for someone. It's only a start. You see, what, what happens in the job market today, there's um, job share or just there's very few people that get a job that gives you 40 or 50 hours a week, a week. Very few people. So it's really about just get a start. How many of you have heard about MOOCs? MOOCs, M-O-O-C-S. Okay, those of you with a pen, you might want to write that down. M -O -O, M for Mary, double O-C-S. What it stands for is Massive online open course. So what there are, if you Google MOOCs, you will get hundreds of thousands of courses, online courses, that you can do for free. 
hundreds, hundreds. They might be a two-week course, they might be a two-month course, they might be a one-year course. And they're put on by all sorts of people. But you do have to make the time and commit. So my thought is, you know, if you're, if you're out of work, why not spend the time where you're using your brain and keeping really active? Because then you can say when you go for a job and they say, well, how do you spend your days? And you say, well, I'm doing a few online courses at the moment. I'm doing one in this and I'm doing one in that. And there's something that you're interested in. So if you look at page two on your handout, and it says, what do you take to a networking event? Well, let's pretend that this was a networking event today, and it is, to some respects. What you show up with is your passion and your special interests, your current and your past roles, whether that's employed or unemployed. I'm assuming that all of you have had, had jobs in your life, you're just currently not working at the moment. Your life experiences, your wisdom, and your networks. So that little bit in the middle, where that, all those overlaps, that's what you showed up with today. When I say volunteering, I don't mean volunteering uh, at a, a, a paid job and they're just using your, your, um, your ability. What I'm talking about is going, you can go online to like Volunteers Australia. They have a whole stack of volunteering jobs that you can do. And it might be, um, it might be talking to people. It, now, that volunteering, the wonderful thing about volunteering is that no one has a business card that says, I'm this. Everyone, when you volunteer, is equal. Because all they want to know is, can you lift that and can you move that from here to here? Or we've got to set this huge hall up and we've got to have 100 chairs laid out in the next half hour. Can you help me with that? They don't mind that you haven't worked or that you're not doing something. But what happens with volunteering, and, and it might be aged care, it might be schools. Schools are often looking for someone to sit beside and be a reader for the children. So you're just looking at where can I go that my skills will be ap appreciated. Sometimes volunteering gives you experience that you can then say, I haven't worked in this area, but I have volunteered and this is and I've done this for a month or I've done this for six months, or where I volunteered, they've given me even an email that just says, thank you for volunteering to help us with da-da-da. So they give you, an, you know, they give you a reference and you're able to put them as the reference. Okay, so, so, so that, that, that may, may be a really easy thing. And what it does, it just gets you up in the morning and you think, oh, right, okay, I'll volunteer one day a week but it gets you doing something that looks good on your resume rather than just, well, there's a big gap since 2000 and whatever to now. It's saying, well, I haven't been working, but I have volunteered in this period. So this whole page two is really about when you value yourself, other people will value you too. Okay, when you value yourself. See, what happens sometimes we look at a job and we think, oh, I've only got, oh, maybe... 60% of what they're asking for. I better not apply, but I, my thought is, okay, I'll apply because maybe everyone's only got 60%. Maybe they've put, it, put a, a description for the perfect person and that, does, that perfect person doesn't exist or doesn't exist that's prepared to take the wage that's being given. But it's really about making those choices. And we've got to start thinking, you know, what would I do if I couldn't fail? What would I do if I couldn't fail? And what am I good at? So here's, who's got access to the internet? <laughs> Nearly everyone, okay. The next time you're going for an interview, I want you to do your homework. It's the preparation that you do before you go for the job. If I'm going in for, my job's no different. I wake up with zero income every day unless I work. I'm self-employed. So when I get someone that says, oh, we're thinking about you coming and speaking at wherever, I've got to start from somewhere. So the first thing I do, I go, oh, okay, what's the name of their company? And I get online and I'll look, and I might spend half an hour looking through their website. And I get as much information as I can. So that when I'm interviewed and they say, why should we give you this job? Well. I've looked at your website, I've read such... So what you're doing is giving them the courtesy of at least knowing something about the organisation. 
the more prepared you are, the more attractive you're going to look to that, to that client. I'm really keen, really keen to work. Give me a go. Just give me a try. So you say no to something to start something else. So think back what I've suggested to you. Business cards, definitely. Free business cards via Vistaprint. Yeah, so they've got the layout. You've just got to put your name, your contact details, your email, and the job that you're looking for. Don't think in terms of who am I going to give these to. When you've got them, you give them out. And just think in terms, uh, if for every five business cards I give out, I get an interview. So you go into your interview, and here's, you're, the, you're the boss I hope to be working with, and I say, oh, thanks very much for meeting with me. Here's my card. And they go, oh, here's a card, okay. So it's the job that you're qualified to do. Like to do. So let's just say it might say um, administration clerk, or it might say um, uh, childcare, childcare worker. If that was what, if that's the job that you're qualified to do, and then you give that out, and they say, "Oh, but this says childcare worker," and I say, "Yes, I know that is what I'm qualified to do, but I thought being a teacher's aide might be a good transfer of those skills, because for a lot of us, we've got transferable skills that we don't think about." Yeah. Okay, so business card, MOOCs, you're going to have a look at the MOOCs and think, okay, that's a free online course that I can do in my own time. Maybe you and your friend do it together. So you help each other. But you put some time in to get the skills. And all we have to do is stand for a moment before you, well, two things. You've got to firstly say, this, and I, every day I do this, why, what, how? Why am I here? What do I want to achieve? And how am I going to do that? Why am I here? What do I want to achieve? And how am I going to do that? So why am I here for you? You're here, a Ford have invited you for long. They've hosted the day, they've hosted the lunch. They're putting on three of these this week. So they're wanting to, to tool you up with different skills than the ones that they give you at a Ford, okay? So transferable skills, maybe get George and, and um, Louise and I to, to get you to think a little bit differently about what your skills are. So why am I here? I want, uh, what? what am I going to get out of today? Hopefully I'll get some information. I got lunch even if I didn't get any information, but hopefully I got some information that I can use. We can't make you take action, but hopefully we've given you the benefits of doing that. And how am I going to do it? Well, I'll, with my session, I'll consider getting a business card. Maybe I haven't got $10 to spare this week, but when I do have, maybe I'll make some in the interim. Maybe I'll just cut up some paper and, and say, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm just in between jobs at the moment. Here's my details. That would be fantastic. It's really, it's just about what can I do to do more than just wait for a Ford to find me a job? What can I be proactively doing? Maybe I'll go and enrol in a course, and there's a lot of government subsidies with the courses, and the criteria is, is quite, quite low for getting it sort of low cost or no cost. Can I enrol in course? Okay, maybe I don't qualify, so let's do a MOOC. I'll go online, there's thousands to trawl through, I'm sure I'll find one that's okay, and I'll take one of the shorter ones that might only take a couple of weeks to do. And I'll commit that I'm going to spend a, an hour a day improving my skills to be job worthy. An hour a day, that's seven hours a week. That's really a day a week that you're committing to your job. So once you're in your body and you walk up and you say, and this is part of the whole networking thing, hi, I'm Robin, mind if I join you? Now what do I risk? I risk that you'll say, no, go away, I don't like you. Or, whatever, you're too old, you're whatever. I risk that, but all I want to do is, hi, I'm Robin, mind if I join you? And I risk that that person will say, no, no thanks. But we're not at the nightclub at four o'clock in the morning. We're just at a networking event saying, hi, I'm Robin, mind if I join you? That's all it is. And, and, I, and that's really, it's act like the host and not the guest. So I, I'll leave you with one question. What one thing, based on whether it's mine, George, or Louise's presentations, what one thing could you do differently tomorrow, differently than what you did today? What one thing could you do that will take you one step closer to getting a job? 
And I'll leave you with the thought that networking can open many doors for you in the world. And networking is a lot like watching sunrises. If you don't show up, you'll never know what you missed. So thank you very much for showing up today. We had a lot of people who didn't show up, all these empty chairs, but we're really privileged that you did. Thank you very much. Thanks.